creating your own linked list data structure is a coding interview question as old as time. It was a part of my first coding interview 20 years ago and it was a part of a coding interview that I witnessed in 2021. So in this session, I will demonstrate how you can create your linked list data structure on the fly during a coding interview without having to memorize everything by using a few key tricks. So let's jump in and have a look. Here is the basic concept of a linked list. It is a list of nodes where each node links to the next one using its next member. Each node also corresponds to a value that we want to store, which the node stores in the value member. So here's the first trick. Before we start thinking about the linked list, we should think about the linked list node. It can be represented as a generic type that takes a value of type T and then has a next member pointing to the next linked list node. And if there is no next node, it will point to null. Now, once you have an understanding of the linked list node, the linked list class is simply a class that contains a pointer to the first linked list node, which we store in a member called head. Now, when starting off, we don't have any values and therefore we don't have any nodes and therefore head is pointing to null. Now, technically speaking, this is actually a complete implementation of a linked list. However, it leaves the burden of maintaining the various next pointers on the consumer of this particular linked list class. Now, the first method that someone would ask you to support within your linked list would be one to add additional values. Now new values should go at the end of the linked list and we could go from head.next.next.next till we arrive at the tail. However, here's another trick. We can store the tail up front as well and again, of course, initialize it to null. This allows us to add new members in constant time as we only need to update tail.next. Now talking about tricks, whenever you are going to be creating new methods within this class, make sure that the invariant that the head points to the first member and the tail points to the last member continues to hold true after that method is complete. So here's our add method that manages to add items to a linked list in constant time. It takes an input value of type T and the first thing that we do is we wrap it up in a linked list node. Next, we maintain the invariant that head should always point to the first node. So if we don't have any nodes right now, then we initialize head. Now, if we already have a tail, then we should update its next to point to this particular node. And finally, this new node is going to be our new tail. And that's it for this constant time implementation of add. And now when in doubt, simply go through the invariants that you want to be true, which is head should be the first, tail should be the last, and each item should point to the next using its next member. Now, another key method offered by the linked list classes is the DQ method. It offers a first in, first out removal of values in constant time. Fundamentally, we return the first value that got added to the head and then update our head to point to the next value. Now in code, if we don't have a head, that implies we don't have any values and we simply return now. Otherwise, we capture the value from the head but don't return it just yet. We have a few pointers to update. The new head is going to be the head.next. And if this means that the head is now pointing to null, implying that the list is completely empty, then we should update the tail to point to null as well. And finally, we return the value that we captured. Now, this is a fairly sufficient implementation of the linked list data structure, but sometimes you just want to loop through the values without having to remove them, aka DQ them. So therefore, we have this function called values, which returns a JavaScript iterator over the values of the linked list. The implementation is pretty simple. We start at the head and store it in a variable called current. And as long as the current points to a valid node and not null, we yield current.value and then in the next iteration, update current to be current.next and repeat the while loop. Implementing your own linked list opens up a whole avenue of other programming interview questions, and we will look at them in future lessons. But for now, let's just look at a simple example of using our linked list in action. To create a linked list for numbers, we invoke our class constructor, passing in the generic argument for number. Next, as an example, we take an array of numbers and then for each of them, pipe them to the list.add method. Finally, to iterate over the values in the list, we use the list.values method and use it with a JavaScript for off loop, logging out each item. And of course, if you run this code, it will work exactly as you would expect, logging out 13912. And that's all for this lesson. If you would like to see more quality videos that will help you progress faster in your development career, then smash the like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.